want to make sure that the parents have a normal car seat that is not expired, hasn't been in any accidents, and is properly functioning. We do have a car seat technician here at the hospital that's able to go with you out to your vehicle, make sure everything is properly installed and that the baby is properly seat belted in the car seat. I do like to recommend to all the parents that you should place the car seat in the rear of the car facing towards the rear and don't buckle the baby up over a blanket or a jacket just over the baby's outfit. Once they're buckled up, feel free to cover them after that to keep them warm, but um, just make sure that, uh, well, here we like to make sure that everything is safe when it's time to go home. Also, I like to remind families that we need you to have a, a normal crib or bassinet at home for the baby. Safe sleep is very important. Babies should never be co-sleeping with the families. Um, babies should be placed on their back, never their side, never their stomach when it's time for sleeping. No pillows or fluffy stuff under the baby. A pillow could actually bend the neck forward and make it hard for the baby to breathe. Nothing on the sides of the head because you don't want the baby to turn and have anything block their face. If you're gonna use a blanket, I definitely recommend that it's kept down near the shoulders, not loose up near the face. And the kind that have a zipper or a Velcro, like a swaddle sack, is very safe. Um, baby can move around and you don't need to worry about it breaking loose and getting over their head. Other important information to know about your baby at home are things to look out for, um, like a sign of an infection or a sign that your baby's getting sick. So some of the main three things to look at are how is the baby feeding, are they excessively fussy and do they have a fever? So for feeding, we like our babies to be eating at least once every two to three hours if they're breastfeeding or at least once every three hours if they're formula feeding. And it's very important that they be eating on the schedule around the clock, especially since they're in the newborn period. Feedings, as long as they're slowly moving forward with the feedings, that's a good sign. But if they should be moving backwards or they should stop eating, that's when you're more concerned that they might be getting sick, especially if they're starting to miss several feedings back to back. Um, other signs of an infection are kind of extreme or uncontrolled fussiness. You've done everything you know, you've tried feeding, burping, rocking, changing the baby's diaper, but if they just will not calm down, that could actually be a sign that something is wrong. Definitely call the pediatrician and talk about that if your baby is experiencing that. I do like to remind families to check the fingers, toes, and, and the penis if it's a boy because sometimes the long hair from the laundry could wrap around there really tightly and it could pinch off those little digits and it could cause um, a strangulation, kind of like when you put a rubber band on your finger. So if you don't know why your baby's fussy, don't forget to look at all those things. And then the, another sign of infection is a fever. Newborns should not be having fevers. So if they have a temperature 100 or higher, definitely call the doctor right away. Technically 100.4 is a fever, but my rule is if it gets to 100, just call and have that conversation. A fever could be the only sign of a serious infection within the urine, in the blood, or in the brain. We do routine lab work on every baby here at GRMC, and one of the main things is checking the baby's bilirubin or jaundice level. We do that at 24 hours of age, and we follow the current AAP guidelines to make sure that that jaundice level is safe before your baby goes home. If it is low enough, then your baby is definitely ready to go home. But I do like to remind all the families that if you notice your baby's skin getting more and more yellow, yellow moving down the body or yellow in the eyes, definitely let the pediatrician know so they could check that again. If you choose to do sunlight therapy, that is a good option for helping the jaundice level come down. But I'd like to remind families that should only be done during feeding times. Don't let the baby sit in the window and, and bake like a potato. To properly take care of your baby's umbilical cord, all you really have to do is try not to let it get wet. You can sponge bathe the baby anywhere on the body, but keep this area dry. In about one to two weeks, the cord will fall off, and at that time you're free to give baby a full bath, but of course never leave your baby in the water. Um, previously, you used to be able to put uh, alcohol on the cord to help dry it out, but that's no longer necessary. Just let it air dry and, and try not to let it get wet. As far as follow-up with your baby, um, it is recommended to follow up within two days with the pediatrician, so definitely make that phone call when you get home. Try to set everything up and make sure to take the paperwork that we give you here to the doctor with you. I provide a discharge summary that has a good summarization of your pregnancy, of the baby's hospitalization with all the important numbers, so definitely take that paperwork with you.